All right. Can you hear me? Mostly, can you uh, can you hear me on the microphone right now? I'm talking. Can you hear me? Talking, talking, talking. Talking, talking. Talking, talking, talking. Testing, testing with the microphone. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Can you hear my talking? Talking. Okay, good. All right, now. Okay, and. Piano, is that coming through?
Hi. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, very regular um, series, um, Solo Piano Sundays. Uh, I'm your uh, I'm your host. Um, I'm your host, uh, Ian Sinclair, and I'll be here to uh, play some uh, music for you for the next, um, you know, however long this takes. Uh, probably something like uh, 40 minutes to an hour. We'll see how it goes. Um, and uh, please let me know in the uh, in the chat if there's um, significant uh, issues. Technically, I haven't been doing this for a while, and this is always uh, tricky. Uh, so hopefully uh, this uh, works and everything's every, everything's going. I can see some of you already in the uh, in the chat, uh, which is great. So hi to those of you uh, those of you there already. Of course, um, uh, you know uh, we resent uh, Dave of um, of uh, resonance there, and uh, I can also see uh, Ji Sun Choi there. A blast from the past. Good to see you. I imagine there's uh, uh, others as well, and I'll um, feel free to uh, join in on the YouTube chat if you feel like it. Um, so, <clears throat> without any further ado, I'll start with um, playing um, a tune originally uh, recorded uh, in a group led by the great trumpeter Clifford Brown. Um, it's a... Um, it's by uh, the pianist and composer uh, Duke Jordan, uh, a uh, oft played, uh, uh, nice tune, fun tune in a uh, minor key uh, called Jordu.
Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully the audio and everything is at least uh, functioning. Let's see. Um, well, I haven't I haven't seen any complaints yet, so hopefully it's hopefully it's uh, working. Um, yeah. So uh, again, that was uh, Jordu. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I am, uh, you know, uh, I'm hoping that um, <clears throat> today is a good opportunity for me to, uh, you know, kind of shake off some of the cobwebs. I haven't played in any sort of pseudo, even pseudo public setting for a long time now. Uh, so hopefully you'll forgive me some, uh, some iffy uh, passages here and there, but... Uh, you know, uh, there's enough there to enjoy, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> and if you do feel yourself enjoying um, any of this, feel free if you'd like to uh, make a, um, a tip, either by uh, sending it to um, the email address you can see on the screen there, uh, the Yahoo address, or you can uh, send it to uh, that PayPal uh, link that's there as well, if that's what you prefer. So um, again, that was Jordu. <clears throat> by Duke Jordan. <clears throat> um, I am going to um, uh, gonna play a tune that I often play by, um, uh, you know, a hero of mine, a hero of many who do what I do, um, Herbie Hancock. So this is um, this is Dolphin Dance.
So, uh, yeah, you, uh, that was uh, Dolphin Dance or something like it by uh, Herbie Hancock. Um, and All right. Um, and as long as I'm okay, people are at least able to hear me. Granted, I did leave my my mic on and yeah you can hear the vocalization a little bit but um better than not hearing the piano at all i'll take it um but good to know uh anyway thank you very much for that denise um so uh again that was uh, Her uh herbie hancock composition um uh this this next tune um is uh by another hero uh another famous uh, jazz pianist. Um, this is uh, uh, by Bud Powell, um, and uh, uh, it's uh, sort of a, an un another unconventional take on the blues. Um, you know, uh, sort of. Yeah, Bud Powell is. Uh, yeah, there's a term that um, contemporary pianist uh, Ethan Iverson has. For some of the uh, early bebop musicians of the uh, of the, the the early innovators of sort of the early to mid 1940s through early 50s, kind of that era, um, the players that came of age in that era, uh, Charlie Parker, especially um, uh, early Dizzy Gillespie, Fats Navarro, people like this, and and 
and Bud Powell is definitely uh, in that sort of league, and um, uh, he calls it high bebop, uh, but uh, specifically as in the you know uh, sort of akin to the if you like the high baroque, uh, and there's very much a uh, uh, the ornamentation embedded in the music is is uh, in a sense uh, very. Uh, baroque in nature uh, at times and and uh, um, so uh, he's definitely the early piano master of that and as such it's uh, basically uh, among the most influential uh, pianists of all time uh, this composition of his is again his uh, sort of unusual take on the blues called Dance of the Infidels
All right. So that was my uh, my take there on um, Dance of the Infidels, the uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, take on the blues by um, by Mr. Bud Powell. Uh, so. Um, um, this next tune I'm going to play, um, which, well, I've, I was, I was, uh, trying to decide what, what order and which things to, <clears throat> to do. And I was still changing my mind, uh, today, but I think the next thing I'm going to do is, um, I'm just going to, uh, try to do it kind of a, uh, a take, uh, a, a little bit of a, uh, loose take, uh, um, on a tune that I play fairly, uh, often, um, uh, called, um, uh, Out of Nowhere.
All right. So that was out of nowhere. Um, <clears throat> an old, an old standard that um, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, let's let's say I'm doing some text painting there with the uh, taking the out of nowhere a little bit literally. But uh, there you go. Um, and uh, that, uh, very glad to see some uh, familiar names um, in the uh, in the chat there. Um, shout out, of course, to um, uh, to uh, you know um, life coach uh, Jr. Professor John Russin there. I can see um, I can see uh, oh um, uh, oh and speaking of blasts from the past, uh, uh, Mark Potts, absolutely Lo love to see that. That's great. Hey, hey man, good to see you. Uh, and um, you know. Uh, uh, of course, I mentioned Denise uh, earlier, Denise Lapointe, and some other folks. That's that's great to see. Feel free if you want to um, uh, uh, get involved in the chat. But uh, and if you enjoy what you're hearing at all, uh, feel free also to um, send a, a little um, e-transfer uh, to the email address you see on the screen, or. Uh, that, that there's that PayPal link as well, depending on your preference. So uh, that's there for you if you uh, feel so inclined. Uh, no obligation, of course. And um, I am going to decide. How are we doing here on time? I am going to do. Um, Uh, a tune of mine. Uh, this is on my album, uh, Know the Reflection. Um, and uh, uh, I've, I originally, my original version of this goes back a long way actually to uh, when I uh, lived in Montreal. Um, I was playing in a small group for a while with a drummer uh, named uh, Richard Knox at the time, very fine drummer. Um, still, uh, probably more active as a rock drummer now, but he's he's a very good, very versatile drummer. Um, and uh, so, Richard Knox. This this uh, tune was originally called a School of Hard Knocks.
All right. So that was the uh, School of Hard Knocks um, and uh, a tune of mine. So um, getting a, I got a shout out there from um, uh, from uh, about the album. Thanks again, Denise. Uh, uh, um, the album got uh, uh, from my now slightly, uh, slightly dormant quartet, uh, granted, but uh, uh, hopefully it can be uh, brought back to life again at some point and uh, uh, with some very, very uh, acclaimed musicians on that record. So uh, uh, if I was really pl uh, planning this carefully, I, I would have had some kind of link and, and stuff so that you could uh, more straightforwardly uh, purchase it, but if you go onto my website, I suppose iansinclairmusic.com, there is um, all the information you need there about how to acquire it. I'm also soon looking into putting it on uh, Bandcamp as well, the uh, uh, well-known independent music website. So um, for now, uh, I am using something else as well, but I, I think Bandcamp is a little bit more broadly used. So anyway, um, there's that. Um, um, next, I am going to, <clears throat> uh, so, uh, I'm going to do, uh, another song that I have played a lot in the past, but, um, uh, but I'm going to play it very differently tonight. Um, and I'm ex sort of experimenting with it and, uh, um, uh, it's a it's a, a really gorgeous song, even in its sort of more traditional setting, uh, and uh, one of the really uh, rare songs. One of the things about old standards with jazz musicians, um, usually what they're playing is only the chorus of the song, and um, uh, and traditionally the verse, unlike sort of you uh, you know typical. My contemporary pop songs, the verse is only one thing, and it's usually an introduction to the actual song itself. Uh, and it's um, usually very, not especially as melodic. It's It's got some relationship to recitative and opera, for those of you uh, who uh, are inclined that way. So that's, you know, for the four of you who are really into that. But but the idea being that it's it doesn't move around as much melodically, and it's more just to set the the tone and the narrative of the lyric. And then there's the actual song. This is one of the rare cases, this song uh, that I'm about to play. Spring can really hang you up the most where the uh, the verse is essential to the song and especially melodically. A lot of jazz musicians will discard verses on many songs, but you can't on this. It's actually uh, it's essential to the character of the tune, um, um, even though it is introductory. Uh, but, uh, beyond that, um, there's, the original song is, 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 is really pretty beautiful and interesting. I'm, um, going, I'm taking a more, uh, unconventional approach as you'll hear to this. And, um, uh, I, the song spring can really hang up the most strikes me this year in particular as a, um, uh, well, perhaps, all the more, um, uh, I don't know how to put this, uh, all, uh, all, all, all the more uh, poignant, let's say, uh, and, and the, so much of the, the lyric, which is an unusually um, evocative uh, lyric, uh, I think actually uh, lends itself well to the uh, feeling that a lot of us are, are having this year around that, um, that is uh, often, uh, cloaked in a lot of feelings that are um, complicated and so hence my arrangement. So with all of that introduction to give myself a bit of a rest and uh, this is my ever evolving arrangement of um, Spring Can Really Hang Up the Most by uh, Tommy Wolf.
I knew I was going to do that at least once tonight. I knew I was going to do that. Didn't have my mic on. So you missed all of my uh, amazing, um, amazing commentary about what I just played. Uh, I, I got into a, a Shankarian analysis. It was it was really something. Uh, um, trust me, Shankarian analysis, it's a big deal. So you missed all of that. Um, but aside from that, uh, what I did, what I was trying to tell, say about that song, Spring Can Really Hang Up the Most, was just that... Um, has a great lyric um, that includes um, uh, near the end, all alone, the party's over, old man winter was a gracious host. Uh, and well, you can imagine how it ends. Um, you know what hangs you up the most. So uh, that's that. Um, uh, um, and yes, there is no question, Denise, uh, this is uh, entirely your fault. So uh, about the, the microphone, not me, the one who forgot to turn it back on. Um, <laughs> yeah, not really, it's my fault. Um, in any case, as I, as I was also saying, uh, I'm about to wrap up uh, here and I, I really appreciate um, everyone being here. I'm gonna do one more uh, before uh, closing. Uh, again, if you're, if you've been enjoying what you've been hearing, you're more than welcome to um, uh, make a contribution at uh, the the email address or the PayPal uh, link if you feel like it um, that are there. Uh, totally optional, of course. Uh, mostly, I'm just happy that you're here and ho hopefully enjoying some of this. Um, so, um, speaking of uh, piano heroes, as I was earlier. Um, uh, perhaps the um, for solo piano, uh, uh, especially contemporary solo piano, there's there's many um, people I admire, but none that I admire more uh, than the great Fred Hirsch. Um, for a long time, he was uh, very very underrated, but uh, he's uh, become a much bigger story uh, in the jazz world in the last few years, which is long overdue. Uh, he's the mentor to many of the, the greatest contemporary uh, jazz pianists. Um, uh, I was lucky enough to take a lesson with him once, but he is um, uh, incredible uh, as a solo pianist. Uh, and um, so uh, what I opted to do here uh, is um, uh, let's, let's say uh, play a version of a version of a song. So this is Fred Hirsch's arrangement, solo piano arrangement, more or less, of uh, Desi Fanato. I'm not going to play his arrangement uh, totally literally, but there's no question where I'm getting this uh, from, this ingenious uh, arrangement from, and I'm not hoping to play like Fred Hirsch doing this, but it will give some idea of, of it, and uh, I'll improvise a fair bit in the middle. And uh, so... You know, it's probably one of those things I'm going to keep on working on and bring back again in, in a future uh, concert because uh, um, <laughs> it's it, it's one of those things that just uh, I, I keep needing to work on. Uh, but hopefully I can get uh, enough of this um, uh, here today. So this is Desifinato. Oh, by Antonio Carlos Jobim. <laughs> 